guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm super excited for today's video because I have compiled a list of 10 super unique niches where you can start looking for products to sell on Amazon. And these niches are things that I have maybe heard of here and there, but these aren't things that you think about typically when you are looking for Amazon products. I think people tend to focus a lot on super basic products, which is not a bad thing, but what I have learned is that there is a customer for for every hobby on earth and sometimes you can find really cool low-cost products that you can sell in these more unique and just kind of like different out there hobbies that people do and it might not be something that you do but someone out there is looking for these products so it's really important that when you're doing your product research you are serving the customer you're giving the people what they want and just because you would never use the product or you've never heard of it doesn't mean that there is not a demand for it and that there are not customers out there searching for it every day on Amazon. So if you are interested in knowing what these niches are, keep on watching this video. If you do like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And let's jump into these kind of weird, not in a bad way, but these weird niches that I have found for you guys. So the first thing on the list that I have for you guys, you probably have heard of before. It's not as unique, but don't worry, I have more kind of obscure ones later on in the video. But the first one is rock climbing. So this is something that I actually have tried doing one time. Rock climbing is surprisingly like a full body workout. I remember when I did it, I was really sore the next day. I used muscles that I didn't even know that I had. And there are lots of different things that people who go rock climbing climbing do and I'm sure you know but if you don't rock climbing is when you are scaling natural or artificial rocks and cliffs and you're using special equipment for that so there are different things like harnesses that are needed there are different tools and things that you can use to have an easier time scaling these structures and so I do think that it's definitely worth it to at least go on Amazon and see what type of accessories, what do people who go rock climbing, what do they need when they are doing this activity? Are there certain specialized tools that they need that you could potentially find accessories for that you could sell, little add-ons? Now, I don't necessarily recommend selling things that are needed specifically for safety. Like, I don't know that I would sell a harness because I would worry about the liability, but maybe there are little accessories to the harness that you could potentially sell, a sling for a water bottle or something like that. And I'm just making this up because I have no clue. I, like I said, only have been rock climbing once, but I do think it is worth it to at least see what else you can find. Next on my list is calligraphy. This is something that I used to be interested in when I was younger. And if you don't know, calligraphy Calligraphy is that very beautiful, intricate, artistic writing. If you've ever, walk with me, walk with me. If you've ever seen Spongebob, you know that episode where he's trying to write a report or a book? Yeah, he's trying to write a book and all he can write is the, but the the is like super pretty and you guys, if you know, you know, okay? <laughs> but I'm sure you can see it on the screen what calligraphy looks like. And it is, like I said, very artistic and super intricate in the way that the letters and everything is drawn and made. A lot of times you're using specialized ink and special pens in order to create thicker lines or thinner lines and to be able to create the overall effect of the calligraphy. So this is something where I'm sure you could look at special paper, different tools that are used to actually write the pens. I don't know if there are pencils that are used for calligraphy. I'm sure there are markers and different devices that you can use to actually, you know, create the art of it all but I do think that that is unique you don't really think of stuff well I will speak for myself I don't really think about people who do calligraphy for work or who do it just for fun or as a hobby but I did a little bit of research and I did indeed find some products where I was just absolutely shocked by the amount of searches there were for these accessories to you know people who do calligraphy so worth looking into for sure next and kind of like the art realm we have origami this is something else that I also tried way back when probably in like elementary school or middle school I did a project where we had to make some origami animals I think it was an art class 
And origami, again, if you don't know, is kind of the art of using paper to create different creations. I know that that's not the best definition, but you get what I'm saying. You're making plants or animals or airplanes or whatever out of paper and I think it's super cool just to know that you can just take a simple piece of paper and create an entire piece of art from it and I know that there are other tools that you can also use when it comes to origami there are kits that you can buy and I'm not saying that that specifically is a good product but that is definitely a niche that you can go down the rabbit hole and see what else you can find. Number four on the list is urban exploration. And this is when you are exploring abandoned places, off limits places, and you're trying to document what it is that you have found. So this is kind of what I think of when I'm imagining a movie with a bunch of teenagers that are going into this place that they heard of that they're not supposed to go. And then they find a secret room or some scary thing. I don't know. It's kind of like that. And believe it or not, there are people who love to do this. They love to just see what it is that they can find in these off limits places that are closed off and all of that. I don't know. I don't see the appeal of it. But once again, there's somebody that does. So that is something that I would look into. I think it's random and kind of different and I'm sure that there are profitable products that you could find within that niche. Number five on the list is sculpting and this is creating sculptures out of things like clay or wood or stone. Another Spongebob reference, I'm really showing my age right now, but you know when Spongebob was making the sculpture of Squidward or was it a squid? No. <laughs> Okay, walk with me. When Spongebob and Squidward were making the sculpture of like that Greek and Spongebob's came out perfect and he just like chiseled it once. That is sculpting. I know that you guys know. Just let me, let me, let me land, okay? <laughs> but within that niche, you can find so many different things because sculptures can be made out of so many different types of materials. As I mentioned, it could be clay. It could be a wooden sculpture. It could be made out of marble. I mean, it could literally be made out of whatever you want it to be made out of. In fact, origami is a sculpture in a sense. It's made out of paper, but it's still a three-dimensional piece of art. And so that's what that is. So that would kind of overlap and fall under arts and crafts. I'm sure that you could find lots of items that people would be needing in order to create their sculptures, not just the material itself, but probably the accessories as well. Maybe they need little utensils to chisel out the shapes, or maybe they need certain types of aprons or different vessels to mix their materials in. I'm making, you know, this up as I'm trying to think of what someone might need for that, but that is something that I would look up as well. Next on my list is beekeeping. There is this guy on TikTok who is a beekeeper and there are women who do it too, but I'm thinking specifically of this one guy that I saw, I think over the summer, and he has got so many followers and people who are so interested in beekeeping. Now, obviously there are people who watch the content, doesn't mean that they're all doing beekeeping themselves or looking after bees, but I do think that that just shows that there is an interest in that as a hobby and that as a niche. And there are people who are beginner beekeepers, obviously people who do it professionally, but there are lots of different tools that they need, lots of equipment that they need in order to keep themselves safe as they are working with the bees in order to extract the honey. So I think that this is something that I would potentially look into, not only because there's interest in it, but also I think it would be fairly easy to create a brand around beekeeping or you know that's like a subset of gardening or actually would it be gardening I don't know I guess it depends on the angle that you would take and the types of products that you would sell whether you're selling like the equipment for it or what exactly or how you would angle your products depending on what the products are so either way I do think that it would still be easy to create a brand around it I mean very easy to put bees on things and make it look super cute use you know the yellow and black colors honey it's a very wholesome niche I would say and I do like niches like that because people tend to complain less about those types of products it's kind of like with babies people will they, they might be 
a little critical of it because they're using it for their child. But generally, the customer being the parents or whatever, they want to like the product. And I could see this being similar in the sense that people would want to like it because it's so nice and wholesome, you know? Number seven on my list is archery. Now, archery is using a bow and an arrow to hit a target. You might be doing it for sports or doing it for recreation. Some people do archery, I think, in leagues. So that would be more so for sports. Some people just do it because it's fun for them. It is, I think, technically considered a sport. It's probably a lower impact sport, but you are using your body, you know, you're having to pull the arrow back and, you know, there's technique to it. It's not just literally like flinging it and seeing where it goes. There are certain things that you have to do and different ways that you can do it in order to hit the target more easily. And so obviously it would be a bow and an arrow. Those might be products. I don't know what the demand is like on Amazon, but there are other things as well that would be accessories to anyone who does archery. So that's something that you can look into on Amazon as well. Number eight on my list is stargazing. So there are people who stargaze, which is using a telescope or binoculars to look at objects in the night sky. These could be stars, it could be planets, it could be whatever you can find in the sky, comets or whatever. And there are people who are very much into this. I always think of Hey Arnold when I think of stargazing, that one episode. Clearly I am a 90s baby, but I do think that anything where people have a very, very intense interest, you know, they they have entire collections of things to support the hobby that they're doing and stargazing is honestly i mean it can be a low cost hobby because if you're using binoculars you can probably find binoculars for a reasonable price but a telescope is not something that is cheap i know that there are accessories for telescopes for cleaning them for maintaining them so that could be something that you might find under the stargazing niche as well Number nine on my list is lock picking. Now, this is something that makes me very uneasy. <laughs> it honestly bothers me when I think too hard about it that there are locksmiths who literally know how to pick any lock, meaning are we ever really safe in our homes because a locksmith could just come and pick your lock and find their way into your house? Let's not overthink it. But there are people who do lock picking for fun. Like literally, it's a hobby for them. They just find the challenge of being able to get a lock open without using the key as something that is exciting, something that, you know, is a fun activity for them. I kind of think of it as like a Rubik's Cube or a Sudoku puzzle. It's just like another version of a puzzle to me. And there are lots of different ways that people pick locks. Apparently, upon my research, I have found that this is a thriving community and people who really enjoy it. I'm not trying to make it sound like it's super weird. It just makes me personally uneasy. But yeah, that's that's something that you can look into and I'm gonna just leave it there. <laughs> and last but not least on my list, I have numismatics. And I don't even know if I'm saying that right or not, but it is studying and collecting like rare coins and pieces of currency. And I know that there are people who are coin collectors, obviously, but there are people who really enjoy studying what is found on these coins. And it's very interesting that there's so much that you can actually look at, but I wouldn't sell the coins themselves. That is kind of a specialized category on Amazon that I do believe is gated. But for people who are collecting these things, obviously they need a way to store these rare coins that they're finding, right? They might need ways to clean them or to display them. These are all things that you can look at. And that's really where I guess I'm going with this whole video is that all of these hobbies and niches that I have discussed in this video, I'm not saying to literally sell like the main thing that you think of when it comes to that niche. I'm saying that you can always look at add-ons, always look at accessories. And I like taking that route because typically those accessories are much cheaper and much easier to source than the actual thing itself. Like again, with the stargazing example, a telescope, I mean, that's gonna be really expensive to buy and to sell, it's huge, it's heavy, that's not what we want. But are there things that are connected to that telescope that we could potentially sell? 
that's kind of the route that I would encourage you to go down when you are looking for these products. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm more than happy to make more videos with kind of these more unique niches that I come across all the time when I'm doing my product research. And a lot of times I'll be honest, I might get curious and I might start looking, but I don't ever really spend tons and tons of time, you know, kind of thinking about how I could monetize these products if I were looking to start my own brand because I already have two brands on Amazon. I'm not necessarily looking to start a third, but I think if I was fresh to Amazon, I would definitely look into these unique places and activities that people are doing and see what I can find. So I hope that this sparked a little bit of inspiration and I hope it helps you find a great product to sell on Amazon. Again, if you liked the video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.